Here we got a few more people coming on in. I'm gonna give these to Kyler. You didn't know we were starting at 9 o'clock straight up or pretty close now. <laughs> All right. Lots, uh, I, I think, to begin to cover. I guess we're just going to work as the Lord gives us uh, uh, opportunity to cover the stuff that he wants us to. Uh, the new series, I guess I want to call it, that we're going to be going through, I labeled it Hook, Line, and Sinker. And what we're going to be looking at over the next several, several weeks, months probably, um, just got to leave it in the Lord's hand, uh, how Satan is getting into our families and he wants to destroy our families. And I felt it in uh, my own home. I'm sure many of you felt it in some measure within your house, even right now, Things going on that uh, the wicked one's trying to get in. Well, we want to know what he's doing, how he's trying to get in, and how we can uh, be prepared to stand against him, to stand against him, and not let him have ground in our families. That's what we don't want to let him have. And he has been getting ground in each one of our families. So uh, I gave you a, a handout here. And we're not getting into the, <clears throat> the heart of the hook, line, and sinker information just yet, but I want to give us some um, just preparatory information to know uh, right as we start it. So I wanted to begin with uh, Satan. Who knows who Satan is? Raise your hand if you know Satan. Hopefully we don't know him too intimately well, but <laughs> unfortunately... Um, I think we do. A lot of us do. And well, we need to understand who he is, where he came from, and what his destiny is, first of all, to begin to have that understanding of uh, who he is, where he is currently in our time, and what's going to happen to him. So, uh, beginning the very, the very first thing, if you look at uh, number one, I actually kind of listed a title at the top, Don't Let Satan Interrupt Your Pure Devotion to Christ. That's what he wants to do, and uh, he's going to accomplish it, I'm telling you. He's crafty, he is very subtle, and he is sneaky, and he knows how to get into your life. He knows the things that he can put there to get you. And the whole thing when we start looking at hook, line, and sinker is you're going to be thinking about a fishing pole and bait, because Satan has all kinds of of bait. And that's what he's doing. He's cast it out there. And guess what he wants you to do with the bait? Take it. And guess what he's going to do with you? He's going to be reeling you right on in, isn't he? That's exactly what he wants to do. And that's, that's what he's doing. So uh, those are things we're going to be looking at. But let's take a look at this crafty uh, angel anyway. Uh, number one is Satan. Uh, it, he is an angel. We've got to know that. He was created as an angel. And he was actually created a... What kind of angel? A what? Uh, one of the archangels or a, a great angel. He's actually a different class, but he was one of the highest ones. He was one of the highest in the class that he was in. Uh, but I want to give you the day that I believe that he was created because there's not a whole lot in Scripture that uh, pinpoints the day that he was created. Many of you have already been through uh, some portions or maybe most of the information that we're going to cover. So it's going to be a review for you, uh, for those of you that haven't. Uh, this is some information you need to know. And you need to be prepared to share it with somebody else. So hopefully you can do it. Uh, who knows what, what day do you think uh, Satan was created? Okay, Brenda said four. Day number four. And don't, you know, if, if Kathy says anything during this time, don't listen to her. Because, <laughs> because what she's going to say is, why do we need to even know that, right? 
Why do we need to know? Day four, not day eight, day four. <laughs> I'm just giving her a hard time. She knows that now. Day number four is the very likely day that Satan was created. And I want to read day four uh, from the scripture. From uh, If you have your Bible or if you don't have one, there's one in the pew. Uh, you'll be able to grab a hold of it. Genesis chapter one, verse number 14. This is what we see God creating on day four. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for a sign and for a season and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God said, let Set, set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And evening and the morning were what day? The fourth day. So what do we see right here that God created that we see on the fourth day? What did he create? Sun what? Sun, moon, and stars. If you wanted to know where that came from out there, God created it on what day? Day four. The sun, the moon, and the stars. And I want you to look over at verse 31 in chapter 1, 2. This is after all the days of creation. So after the sixth day when God created. It said, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very... Good. It was very good. In the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And then we go in chapter 2 and it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the what of them? All the host of them. That means everything that, was God, that God was creating. That even means the angels. That even means the angels. All the host of them. And, he, and the seventh day, God did what? He rested, didn't he? That's where we end up with that Sabbath day rest. So he rested on uh, that seventh day. Now, did it say anything about angels being created on the fourth day? Well, let's go to Job chapter 38 for just a moment. You know, it's marvelous how God doesn't give us every little piece in just one spot, does He? He can give us a little piece here. He can give us a little piece in the middle. And He can give us a little piece at the end. And you know what He wants us to do? To be able to read the whole of the Bible and hopefully be able to begin to put some of those things together. Host. Good. And the host does, it means, it actually, if we, I think if you break down the word, it means everything. That's including the angels. So the stars, the galaxies, all the heavenly realms, including them, is the host of them. Exactly right. So, well, some people would say, though, well, let's look at Job 38 first. Job 38, starting in verse number one, coming down here. It says, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Wherefore was thou when I laid the foundation of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. So God's talking with who? Job. And he's asking him, where were you, Job, when I created this earth? When I laid out the foundations, where were you at? You weren't even created yet, Job. Where were you? He goes on, who has laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest, or who has stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? And he gives us verse 7, I think that's a key. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, who are, who are the morning stars here? Who are they? The morning stars. Everybody, I'm hearing angels. Anybody want to say anything else? How about then, who are the sons of God here? 
what? The angels are the sons of God right here in this passage. So who are the morning stars? The sun, the moon, and the stars. That's what he's talking about with the morning stars right here. The sons of God are the angels here. And what do we see them doing together? What are they doing? They're shouting for joy, aren't they? They're shouting for joy. Well, how do the sun, the moon, and the stars shout for joy? What do they do? do you, they sing? Okay, so they sing. What else? They shine, don't they? Just by the mere light of all that they are. Isn't that shining back the glory of God and shouting to Him and all the creation that He did? The morning stars and the sons of God together. And if we see, if the sons of God here then are angels, what did they do? They shouted for joy. And why did they shout for joy at the same time that we see the morning stars? What had happened? What do you think? They were probably created the very same day on the fourth day. And I can bring a whole bunch of other scriptures out to show you that the angels were created. Because some people say that angels have always existed. And angels have not always existed. There's only been the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that have always existed in eternity past. But everything else that we know, that we see, has been created. So, now Paul asked a question. Paul's not here to defend himself, so. <laughs> He's probably sleeping, I would bet. <laughs> He's working night shift now, so we pray for him that uh, he can get rest. Is he? Okay, so hopefully he'll come a little bit later. Uh, Paul came up right up last week because he was looking ahead a little bit. He said in the sheet after I handed it out. And if we go into Genesis chapter 6, there's, there's a reference to the sons of God there. And if you, haven't, if you haven't read that before, can anybody tell me a little bit about what maybe what be going on in Genesis 6? Taryn raised his hand. You forgot. Raised his hand, then he forgot. <laughs> Somebody help me. Okay, yeah. Tell me a little bit about what you know about that, Sandy. Okay. Okay. That's the that's the exact passage, but I would challenge what Sandy said exactly about that, because there's two views. The two views are, is that the, uh, maybe we better read it. We might just spend a little time right there. Let's go to Genesis 6 for a minute, because Paul asks a question too. I have actually a whole study on just this one little passage right here with some of the things that are here. So let's start in verse number one of chapter six, Genesis 6. It says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all that they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. Also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were, was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. And it goes on to Noah and shows that Noah, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So the whole thing here is some people interpret this passage to say that angels, sons of God, came and did what? came unto the 
daughters of men. And what did they do? They had children together. Well, let me tell you this right off the bat. We, what you've got to understand about God is you have to understand the doctrine of angels. So if you begin to understand the doctrine of angels, when angels were created, I'm going to pull from some people that are in our angel study. When they were created, they were created with a Latin term. Can somebody help me how they were created? Posse non pecari. Angels were created, posse non pecari. And somebody help me with what does that mean? Not able to sin. That means when God created them, they were not able to sin, but that meant that they what? Could they sin? They could sin. But He made them not able. So they could choose what? Not to sin, or they could choose to sin. So posse non pecari. Well, there was one of those angels who we know to be, what's his angelic name? Lucifer. And he chose, what did he say? I will, I want to be God, right? The five I wills of Satan, and what did he do? He fell, so he, he was able not to sin, but what did he choose? To sin. So he became known as another Latin term. Can somebody help me with that one? What is it? What? His name is Satan. He became known as Satan or the devil. But he also, there's a Latin term that describes his characteristic now. Kyler, you got? Non posse, non pecari. You all writing that down? Non posse, non pecari. What does that mean? What, was not, what does non posse, non pecari mean? Not able not to sin. That means all Satan does is what? Sin. That's all he's about is darkness and sin, and that's who he is right now. But then there was the angels that made it through. It was, a, it was kind of a, a time that God was testing them to see what they were going to do. And those angels became known as Satan and his demons and all that fell with him. We'll get into that a little bit more. But there was another group of angels. The ones that did not choose to sin. And there's a Latin term that describes them. What is that term? Non posse pecari? Is that what it is? Non posse pecari. What does that mean? Not able to sin. So those faithful angels would not sin. Okay. So now that we got that all established, you got all that? That's some deep... Those are some pieces of some deep doctrine, right? Deep things to know. But when God created angels, all of them, He created them without the ability to do something. What is that? Procreate. or Procreate. So that means when God created angels, he, he created them with a fixed number. This is how many angels there are. No more. Guess what? None less. And there was how many of those good angels that ended up falling? Again? One third. And we'll look at that a little bit later. So one third of, can we count the number of angels that God created? To man, they are in Innumerable. So an innumerable amount fell. Does that mean that one third of an innumerable amount, do you think you'll ever be able to count them? We could not even count the one third of the innumerable amount. But one thing that we got to know is they were created that they did not procreate. Remember, Jesus even talked about it, right? With the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Sadducees were mixed up about the resurrection, weren't they? And when Jesus talking with them, they believe that when one dies, remember the, the example of the brother? When one brother has got a wife and he dies and the other brothers haven't married, then that brother's supposed to marry that wife to take on the name, the family name in that time. Well, it went through seven of them. And then the Sadducees wanted to know, well, in the resurrection or when they're in heaven, whose husband will this lady be? She's had all seven of them, right? Right? What does Jesus say? You don't understand. 
Because in heaven, you will be like what? The angels who do not what? Procreate or they do not marry. So if we say that angels left that abode, even though they would say that they are the bad angels, and they came and procreated with man, it's not possible doctrinally. It goes against what the word says. But there are people out there that are saying that that is true. So Paul's question with that was the word here is sons of God. When we read in Job, sons of God meant who? Angels. So now, here we have the same word, sons of what? Sons of God. And if you go back, that's what Paul came up with. And it took me a little bit to, I had information that was like floating around in my mind. <clears throat> and it took a while for it all to kind of come back around to where it was. So uh, his question last Sunday was, okay, I've looked ahead in, uh, in Job 38, sons of God. And I've looked at um, Genesis 6 here, sons of God. And it's the same Hebrew word, Benny, B-E-N-E. It's the same one. So he said, now you've got to explain to me that because it's... It are, it's angels. So how are you going to change that right here in Genesis 6 then? If he says in Job 38, it's Benny, angels. What are you going to say? Is that a tough one? It took me a minute. I was going like this for a minute. Okay, come on, Lord. I know I've studied that. Where is it at? And then I was able to grab a hold of it. I almost missed it though for a minute. When, what is the oldest book in the Bible? Job, right? Job is the oldest book of the Bible written in the patriarchal period of time. What would be the next books that would come in line after Job? What is it? The Pentateuch, which are what books of the Bible? First five books of the Bible. So the, who wrote the first five books of the Bible? Moses did. Who wrote the book of Job? So, does anybody got a little note in Job at the beginning? Does, does your Bible say? Does it, some of them will say, well, who wrote this? Who wrote this, this book? So who wrote Job? See if you got anything, if your Bible says anything. What's it say, Carol? Unknown, okay, unknown. Mine says unknown too. I mean, my if I'm looking at the, see if anybody else has anything that would say anything different. Unknown. Anybody else? Un Dick says uncertain. Uncertain, unknown. Even the date is uncertain. We can do something to put the date in there that we're pretty close. We can do a couple things to help us with that. Okay, a learned man whose knowledge embraced the heavens and the earth. Okay. Could have it been Job? Could have it. Sure, it could have been, could it? But we don't know through history and stuff. I can't put my finger 100% on it to say who did. Now, the first five books of the Bible, I would almost go to the stake to say, guess who wrote those? Moses did under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But Job, I'm not quite sure. But what we have to know this is I know, I know that Moses did not write what? Job. Moses did not write the book of Job. So we've got two different authors. So, the author that wrote Job uses the sons of God word. What is it? What's the Hebrew word? Does anybody remember again? Benny. Which it has actually several different meanings. One of those is an angel or a messenger. And then we got Moses that uses Benny back here in Genesis chapter 6. How could we prove to somebody that he's not speaking about angels there? 
If Benny could be a messenger or an angel, how could you prove it? When Paul comes up and asks the question, how can you prove it to him? Otherwise, if you can't prove it, could you have a false interpretation of Genesis chapter 6? You could. You could. So how could we prove it? They can't Okay, that's one proof is they can't procreate so we know it can't be angels coming. That's good. Lee? Earlier in Genesis, God tells us that every kind reproduces after its own kind. They can't cross. Kinds. Very good. We, uh, he said that, that in the beginning of Genesis, when, when everything was created, it was created after its kind. That means a dog was created after its kind, a cat after its kind, and it couldn't cross over kinds. Right? Now, two different dogs that were the same kind could what? Procreate together, right? And we get a different dog. So that's a good, that would be a proof. Anything else? Those are good. Get you thinking. How about this? When Moses wrote, under the inspiration of the Spirit, when he talked of angels... When he spoke of angels, guess what word he never used? Benny. So when Moses wrote, when he spoke of angels, he never used the word, Hebrew word, Benny. He didn't. There's proof. I'm not going to take the time to prove it this morning, though. He used the word. He used the word. If you go into Genesis like 18 and 19, you remember when the angels... The three angels, one of them being Christ, came to Abraham's tent, and then they went over into Sodom. A couple of them did. Well, finally, when you get to Genesis chapter 19, you get the word angel that, guess who used? Moses. And it's the word, I think you pronounce it, Malak. Malak. Or Malak, I've heard it pronounced. M-A-L-A-K. But it looks like the pronunciation is M-A-L-A-W-K. Malak. That's the word that he uses when he speaks of what? Angels. So now if we come back to Genesis chapter 6 here, when can, can an author, I mean even looking at, at the New Testament in uh, the Greek or the Hebrew, can a word be used in different ways? It can. In our English language, can one word be used one way, but it means something different? Okay, when you grew up, let me give you one of those words. When you grew up, when I grew up, when somebody said, shut up, what did that mean? Be quiet. It meant to be quiet. Were you ever to say it? No. You were taught not to say it. Now what, that word has evolved in our day, and if you say, shut up, what does it mean? Yeah, yeah, get out of here. Oh, really? Now, does that mean it? Does that mean something different? Same word. You see how it's the same with Benny when it was used in the time of Job to when it was used in Genesis chapter 6. So those are three proofs. There are several more proofs that we can actually show. There is only, there is only one supernatural birth. And what is that only supernatural birth that we would ever see? Jesus Christ, right? Now, if angels came down to ladies and they procreated, that would have to be half what? Half man and half what? Angel, which just is not possible. It just is not possible. Who wants men and ladies to sit there and fool around with that for a little bit in your mind? Who wants to get you off and maybe off track and even believe that a little bit? Satan does. If you start believing that, you can believe a whole bunch of other goofy stuff that he's going to try and bring to your heart and to your mind. So, we better quit. All right, that's the question. Question. Well, who was the Son of God in that term? Then? Oh, okay. Who is, yeah, that's a good... <laughs> leave you hanging. Leave you hanging with that. 
If, if we really want to understand the Bible when we're reading it, um, I like Chad Miner for this. Like when we're doing our, our Bible study Saturday morning, I notice this with Chad. I'll take out a verse here, maybe a verse here and a verse here to apply the point or the principle that we're bringing out. But what does, what's Chad doing during that time when we're taking this point and this point and this point? He's still back on this point. Guess what he's doing? Right? He's reading. He wants the context of what's being said so he can have a, a better understanding. When I've already gone there, so I forget that somebody else has to go back to the full context and I'm just taking a couple little pieces out to apply the point. So if we take the whole context of what's being spoken prior to Genesis chapter 6, there are two lines of people that the Bible's talking about. Who knows what those two different lines are? Okay, Lee said the line is Seth. And the line of Cain. Now with the line of Cain and the line of Seth, what were those two lines never to do? What did God say that they should not do? What? Cross. Cross or procreate. The line of Seth was not to go in unto who? The line of Cain. And they weren't supposed to have kids together. Because the line of Cain was what? What? Evil? Evil? They weren't following the ways of the Lord. They had rebelled against all that God was. But the line of Seth was doing what? They were beginning to follow after the Lord. And can you see? The sons of God, guess what line that is? Seth. Sons of God. And are you, in the New Testament, uh, if you're a believer and you've trusted in Christ, what are you called? A son of what? You're called a son of God, aren't you? If you believe, so we can apply some of the principle there. So we have the line of Seth, the sons of God, and then who is the line that we would read? The daughters of men. Who would that be? Cain. Cain. Because he's the daughter. Why is he the daughters of men? Because what's he doing? He's sinning. He's gone his own way. He's doing his own thing. But Seth was the line that God said that I want. You guys are being more obedient. So when those two lines crossed and they began to procreate and stuff, what did God say that he was going to do? Okay, I've had enough. I'm going to destroy it. Right? I'm going to destroy it. It repented me that I've made man. And I'm going to destroy man. When those two lines cross. So if we take in context of what's being talked about, he's not even talking about angels before that. Nor is he talking about angels after that. He's talking about Cain's line, and he's talking about Seth's line. So it doesn't even fit within the context of what the passage means that we're, that we're talking about. Okay. We did not make it very far. We did not make it very far, but I hope you... Did anybody learn anything? Raise your hand if you learned something. I hope you did. I hope you learned something, a little piece. Angels were created I, very possibly on what day? Day four. If it wasn't day four, there's one thing that we know for sure. They were created on one of the what days? One of the six days. So if you want to argue and say, okay, day five. Show something to prove it a little bit. I'm going to bring it up. <laughs> or if you want to say day six or day two or day one, bring something a little bit to prove it. I'm just going to prove it a little bit with Job 38. There are a couple other ones that we could draw in there to help prove that too. That it looks like if any of the days that we wanted to select out, possibly day four. Did you learn some Latin terms? Can you, what was the first Latin term, term called? What is it? Posse, posse non picari. The second one, non posse non picari. And the last one, posse non picari. Is that what it is? Say it, Kyler. Non posse picari. Non posse picari. I don't know if you'll remember that or not. But 
So we're beginning, we we're looking at, we know at least we covered this morning, the day that he was created. Now we're, what we're going to follow through with this wicked angel is from the time that he was created, and we're going to go all the way to see his final end. Because we've got to know it. And then we're going to see in between here, where is he at right now? And what's he got the capability of doing right now? Do you think you need to know that? Sure we do. We need to know that. We do. Let's pray.